In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a child theme. Why do I need a child theme, you might ask? Well, imagine you have a computer and you save all kinds of pictures and videos and, and files and you make all sorts of tweaks on it and then you don't have an external hard drive and your computer crashes and you lose it all and you go buy a new computer. Great, you got a new computer, but you don't have anything that you wanted to save. It's all gone because you didn't save it onto an external hard drive. A child theme is kind of like an external hard drive. It allows you to save all the changes you make to your theme, all the tweaks that you make to your code. It allows you to save those changes. So when you update your theme from version 1 to version 2, your changes are preserved. If you don't use a child theme and you just tweak the code, you tweak the actual theme, when it goes from 1.0 to 1.5 or to 2.0, you lose everything. So that's why you need a child theme. And that's what I'm going to show you how to put together. So let's get started. Okay, if you want to make a child theme, you have to have an FTP file transfer protocol program. I recommend FileZilla. It's free and it's a good quality program. Go ahead and type in FileZilla into Google. Click the first link. Click download FileZilla client. And then since I have Windows, I'm going to click this file. Then I will click save file and save it to my desktop. Once I've saved it, I will double click the file and click on run and then install the program. Be careful when you're installing the program. They may be bundling other software with this program. I don't know because I haven't installed it in a long time. But just watch out and read each box before you click next. Go ahead and open FileZilla and when you do, you will come to a screen like this. You're going to need this information, host, username, and password in order to log in. What we're going to need to do is go to InMotion's website, click on AMP Login up here. If you have a different host, it's going to be a little different. Go ahead and log in. Once you get to this screen, go ahead and scroll down to the bottom and you will see technical details here by your domain name. Then this page will come up. What you're going to need to take note of is your username, your host name, and your password. Those are the three things we need. Now go ahead and plug in your host name here, your username here, and your password here and then click quick connect and you should be connected to your web host. Now that that's done let's go ahead and log into our WordPress dashboard. This is a brand new WordPress installation. I've gone ahead and changed the theme to be 2012 because it's an easy theme to modify. You can see there's nothing here it's very boring. Okay what I'd like to do to this boring ugly looking theme here is I'd like to have some rounded corners Maybe I want to move this search bar up here above the uh, header. Who knows? But I want to make some changes. And in order to make those kind of changes, since those changes are not available in the theme options, I'm going to have to get into the code and start tweaking. That's why I need a child theme. Because if I'm going to be making changes to the code and then this theme gets updated, all my changes will be lost. I need a child theme. In order to create a child theme, we need to make one file and it can be made in any basic text editor. The file should look exactly like this. The only two lines that are required in this little header are the theme name and the template. And then you will need this import line here. Make sure that your template name matches your theme name exactly. Then you want to save this file as style.css in a place that you can remember. Now we need to go to our FTP program that we installed and connected. Okay, here it is. So I'm going to go to my desktop where I saved that file and I saved it in a folder called 2012 and there it is, style.css. Okay, and then I'm going to go over here to this side and InMotion stores all their website files in a folder called public.html. So double click that and then look for your WordPress installation. The one I'm looking for is called Nifty Website. Here it is. I'm going to double click that. And this WordPress installation was installed in this folder called Child Theme. So I'm going to click on that. Okay, this is my WordPress installation. I'm going to click on this folder called WP Content because that's where my themes are. And then I'm going to click on Themes. And in here, I'm going to create a new folder called 2012-child. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to click create directory. I'm going to call the new directory 
2012-child. Like this. And then I will click OK. So here's my new folder. I'm going to double click that. And as you can see, there's nothing in there. I just created it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this file called style.css into this empty directory by simply dragging it over. Now I've moved this file over to my web host. Okay, let's go back to our dashboard. And then we're going to hover over appearance down here. And then we're going to click on themes. Now scroll down a little bit and you can see there's a new theme here with no picture or anything. It's called 2012 child. That's the theme I just created. If you've gotten this far, congratulations. You have created your first child theme. What I'm going to do is I'm going to activate this theme. Now the 2012 child theme is activated. Let's go to our home page and see what it looks like. Well, it looks exactly the same. Why? Because we haven't done anything. We haven't added any code and it's calling the style sheet from the parent theme. So there are no changes made, but I'm about to make a change. I'd like to make these corners rounded on this blog. I don't think the square corners look very good. So I want to make rounded corners. I know how to do that because I know the CSS code that I need to use. If you're going to be making changes to your themes, you're probably going to be spending a lot of time on Google looking up how to do things and looking up the code you need to do certain things for certain themes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my dashboard. I'm going to hover over appearance and I'm going to go down to editor. The only file I'm going to see in here is my style sheet that I just created because that's the only file in this theme. Now I know the code for creating rounded corners. So I'm going to paste it right here and then I'm going to click update file. Then I'm going to go back to my theme and see what it looks like. Bam. I now have rounded corners. So how did I know the code for rounded corners? Well, I did a lot of searching on Google for 2012 theme rounded corners and I found the code I needed. So you're going to have to do a lot of that stuff. But the cool thing is now when 2012 gets updated to the next version, I'm not going to lose my changes when I update the theme. I'll still have rounded corners. Using this method, it is possible to modify pretty much anything on your site. What if I want to do something like switch the search bar up here? In that case, I'm going to have to modify a file other than style.css. How do I do that? Well, for that particular modification, if I want to move the search bar up here, I have to modify the file called header.php. So I go back to my FTP program. And if you remember, we're in our 2012 directory here to get back one directory, you click this folder with the two periods. That'll take us up one directory. Now here's the, the original 2012 theme. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. And I'm going to scroll down just a little bit until I find header.php. And there it is, header.php. Now I'm going to drag this over to my desktop. I'm already in a folder called 2012 on my desktop. You can see that here. And I have these other files in there. So I'm going to go ahead and drag header.php into there. Now remember, this is the original header for the parent theme. Now I'm going to go back to my notepad program and I'm going to go to open here and I'm going to navigate to this folder, which I'm already in there. And I am going to open this file called header.php. Double click it. Here it is. Now I happen to know the changes I want to make already. So I'm going to make them in here. But here's what you need to know. If you're going to be making changes to files other than style.css, you need to include the entire file. For instance, since we're modifying header.php, we need to include this entire file in the child theme. We can't just add a little bit like we can to style CSS. With other files, you must add the entire file and make changes to that file. So in order to move the search box up to where I want it, I'm going to add this little bit of code here, right here, to my header file. And then I'm going to click File, Save As, and I'm going to leave the name the same, header.php. And I'm going to click Save. And this is going to ask me if I want to overwrite the other file. I say OK, because I'm just overwriting it on my computer. I'm not making changes to the original parent theme. Then I go back to my FTP program. I go back to my child theme. So I scroll up. And remember this 
this little folder here with the two dots will take you back one directory. So I click that and there's my 2012 child theme. I double click that. Here's my one file that I have in there. Now I'm going to drag my modified header file over there. Now I'm going to go back to my website. I'm going to go to my dashboard. I'm going to go to appearance and then to editor. And you'll see I now have another file in here called header. So I have my style sheet now and my header. Remember the style sheet just needs this to work. The header needs the entire file plus any additional changes you made. So let's go ahead to our site and see what happened. Okay, there's the search box up there. I didn't remove it from down here. I don't really like it on the left side. I want it on the right side. So that means I'm going to have to modify the CSS again. So I'll go back to my dashboard, back to appearance and then editor. And then I'm going to add a little bit of code down here to make my search bar be where I want it to be. And I'm going to click update file. And then I'm going to go look at my site. And there's my search bar right where I want it. Now we can just get rid of this other search bar by going to the dashboard, going to appearance and then widgets, and then dragging the search out of there. And now our site looks cool. Okay, one other thing you need to know about child themes, and that is if you decide to make changes to the functions.php file, you don't have to include the entire functions.php file. You just need to include whatever new function you're putting in there. So the things that you need to remember are this. You need one file to create a child theme. It's your style.css file. Then if you decide to make modifications to any other files, you need to upload the entire file with just your changes added, except for the functions.php file. With that one, you only need to include the new function that you're trying to add. The point of this tutorial was how to make a child theme and why you need a child theme. Now you know how to make one and you know why you need one. Because if your theme is ever updated and you've made all these tweaks and changes to the code of your site, you will lose all the changes unless you have them saved in a child theme. A lot of people are fine with just the style.css file as their only file in their child theme. Why? Because it can do so much. It can change the look of your site completely. You can widen or shrink the margins. You can change the topography, the font. Um, you can move things around. You can create buttons. You can do a lot with CSS. So I would recommend just starting with a style.css file in your child theme and learning about CSS and tweaking your theme in that way. You might find that that's plenty for you. And then if you want to get into more serious tweaks to your theme, then you're going to need to start modifying other files. Do it, Elena. Thank you for watching our video. No, 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 no. You gotta talk a lot louder that and clearer. Thank you for watching our video. No, no, no. You're not talking clear. You're mumbling. Thank you for watching our video today, and I hope you learned a lot. And please subscribe to our Chan 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 channel. Chan. Love, love you. Cut, cut.